All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniela Blanco. I just became a third year PhD student in chemical engineering here at Tandon. I work with Professor Miguel Modestino, and I am also the co-founder of Synthetics, together with Miriam, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. But you have me, so let's hope that's enough. <laughs> And then, today I am really excited because I'll get to share with you a little bit of the research that fueled our motivation to launch this startup. I want to talk to you about the impactful research that is happening here at Tandon and how we're electrifying the chemical industry as we engineer a sustainable future. In 2018, we were only 2 billion people in the world. However, in the past century, this number has more than tripled. Our lifestyles have also changed. And the problem is that energy is the base of all of our activities and processes. So that leads us to an undeniable question. How much energy do we actually need to keep supporting this growth? Well, it turns out that we're expected to have a 28% increase in energy demand by 2040. Now, this is why different universities, the UN, and many more entities all agree in one thing. Energy is a main problem for humanity. And why? Because it turns out that 30% of our energy demand is met with renewable energy sources, including hydro, solar, and wind energy. However, the remaining 70% comes from oil, coal, and gas. Resources that are not just limited, but that are also highly polluting. So the first thing that we had to do was understand, if we wanted to solve this problem, where is this energy being used? It turns out that the industry is the largest consumer of this energy, accounting for over 30% of the total US energy demand. And then how are they powering these processes? Well, they're using heat, which comes from burning fossil fuels, and that releases tons and tons of CO2. In fact, this is precisely why the chemical industry on its own has become the third largest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. But look around you. In 2019, pretty much everything you see is made by the chemical industry. So the chemical industry is not going anywhere, and neither are its processes. And therefore, our only possibility is to start reinventing chemistry as we know it. We need to redesign chemical processes and make them something new, make them something better. So in order to do this, we, another thing, this new generation of chemical engineers, we have a dream to electrify the chemical industry. That means using electricity instead of heat to power chemical reactions. Making sure that this 30% of the energy is part of sustainable chemical processes, processes that we can design to be more efficient, safer, and renewable. If we want to electrify the chemical industry, we need to move away from the use of heat and fossil fuels and start implementing electrochemical processes, which use electricity directly to drive chemical reactions. Now, electrochemical processes have several advantages. First of all, they can be a platform for the implementation of green chemistry platforms. But why? First, because there is an easy possibility for the integration of renewable energy sources. Since the electricity that we need for the reaction, we can obtain it very easily from wind, solar, or many other renewable energy sources. At the same time, these processes use benign aqueous electrolytes. That means that our reaction mixture is based in water instead of toxic solvents. And finally, this process is run under mild operation conditions, usually just room temperature and atmospheric pressure, meaning that they are at the same time safer. And this also leads us to our second major advantage of the electrochemical processes. And it's the fact that we can control our products and our reaction rates with the reaction potential instead of having to go to a dangerous control of high temperatures and pressures, as it is usually happening in the current chemical industry. Where can we get with this vision? Well, electrochemical processes are actually implemented to produce a variety of molecules, which are used in a multitude of sectors, from textiles to cosmetics, medical, and many other applications. And we decided to start by looking into one of the largest electrochemical processes, nylon. Nylon is used everywhere on your swimming suits, your, your clothes to go outside, outdoor apparel, plastics, even car parts. It holds a $35 billion market. And the problem is that with the manufacturing processes that are highly polluting and with the continuously increasing demand for nylon, we are releasing over 26 million tons of CO2. And this number is doing nothing but continuing to go up. 
if we wanted to solve this problem, chemical engineers, we first took a step back. And we had to understand how this process worked and what we could change about it. So it turns out that nylon, in order to produce it, we have to go through three main chemical intermediates. In other words, it is a three-step chemical process. In the first step, we produce a molecule or component called adiponitrile or ADN. Now in industry, 70% of this ADN is produced using heat and fossil fuels in a polluting and unsustainable process. However, the remaining 30% is produced using electricity. But why is it only 30%? Well, let's look a little bit deeper into these two processes. For the thermochemical process, the one that dominates the market and uses heat, there are major challenges that they're facing. First of all, they're using toxic chemicals, including lethal HCN. Second, they have harsh operation conditions, including high temperatures and pressures that make the process highly unsafe. And finally, they're not sustainable because they rely on fossil fuel generated heat for their reactions. These challenges are so important, in fact, that the industries that are making ADN with this technology have major problems with their capacity increase because it is costly and dangerous. And right now, because of that, there is a huge shortage and a lot of tension in the supply chain for nylon. On the other side, the electrochemical process we have. We said before that it had tons of advantages, right? So why does it only hold 30% of the market? Well, the simple and very straightforward question it's because it's not well understood and nobody knows anything about it. It turns out that there is extremely limited literature on this process. And the only company that implements it, first implemented it 50 years ago, poorly optimized it over the year, and kept everything confidential. So nobody knows what is actually happening there. But we weren't gonna let that stop us. So we first looked into everything that was happening inside and what was the major problem. Well, summarizing it for you, this is the major problem. There are lots of reactions taking place at the same time, and they're incredibly hard to control. Over here, the green pathway shows you what we need to go through to get to ADN, the desired nylon component, and all of these yellow chemicals, they are all waste or undesired products. So if we want to avoid these yellow chemicals, first, it is incredibly difficult, and second, they're it is essential for us to be able to do that if we want to maintain the efficiency and the cost competitiveness of this process. If we want to make this reaction happen, we need a reactor like this one, where there are two metallic plates that act as electrodes, then there is a solution that comes in, reacts inside, and then it comes out with the products and waste. On one side, we reduce our reactant AN to ADN, and on the other side, we just produce oxygen. But as we look deeper into it, we realize that all temperature, pH, the concentration of our reactant, the composition of the solution where the reactant was in, the time for the reaction, the reactor design, the way we input electricity, even the exposure that this reaction had to light, and many others, all of them had an incredibly strong influence on the efficiency of this process and the waste that we were obtaining. So now you get an idea of how complicated the puzzle was when I started my PhD. We put all of our knowledge, all of our tools from chemical engineering to figure out how to optimize each of these variables individually. We were able to do that. We found the right values to reach the efficiency that the, currently, that the industry is currently using it. So right now, we got to this place, right? We wanted to do more. We wanted to analyze so many more things, but it would take us years. And I mean, I like it, but I wanna do more things on my PhD, right? So we realized that we needed to do something else. We needed to accelerate the process with which we were gaining information from this reaction. And that is how we decided to start working on what is right now the kickoff of an alternative way to engineer chemical processes and optimize them. We are proposing a combination between the human intuition of chemical engineers and artificial intelligence. What does this mean? This means that we want to reach possibilities that are not currently reached by conventional experimental approaches. And therefore, we should be able to reach higher efficiencies than the ones that have been previously obtained. To make it a little bit more clear, let me show you an example of this. This is a set of experimental data that I gathered recently. And you can see how the production for the nylon component changes according to two parameters, parameter A and parameter B. Two parameters that we found were highly influential on the production of this nylon. Uh, component. And then we tested different combinations of these two parameters, right? Following our human intuition and trying to see if we could get the best points that will give us an idea of what was happening on the entire landscape. 
With this knowledge, we found that this down here was the best operation point. Because the darker the red, then the more ADN we're producing, more nylon components. And instead, the blue ones were lower production, so they were, least, th they were less of the nylon component. On this point that we found, we were able to produce, to have a 20% increase in the production rate for this nylon component compared to what they currently have in industry. However, we didn't stop there. And we started using artificial neural networks to predict what was happening on the rest of this landscape. And that is exactly how we took the knowledge that we had on these very specific points and we turned it into this. A complete map of reactivity. A complete map of performance. Ultimately, a complete map of profitability for this process. Because the more ADN you make, the more money you're making in industry. And then, to give you an idea of the power of these tools and how we can use them, this artificial neural network and our machine learning algorithm showed us that the highest production rate was actually found here. We hadn't originally tested it, but if the computer said it, and now we know from Professor Elsa that they do very cool stuff, we decided to go ahead and test it. And guess what? That 20% increase that we originally found, we brought it up to 30%. And it doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it is a lot. <laughs> And this is only possible with a combined approach of the human intuition of chemical engineers and machine learning. Because we need to use and do our best with the tools that we have on this entry to reinvent the way we do engineering right now on the chemical industry. But now you're probably asking yourselves, okay, very nice colors, that's a very nice number, we have seen how it has been improved, but what is the impact of all of this? Well, right now with the technologies that we developed right here at Tandon, we have a process to produce that component for nylon offering a 30% price reduction. We have higher efficiency to the point that we use 50% less raw material and energy and we produce half the waste. And finally, our reactor has been designed to input DC electricity instead of AC, which allows us to diversify our energy sources in a cost efficient way, even if we tap into renewables. So for example, if we want to use solar energy, we can offer the very same cost advantage while also being an emission-free process. Therefore, if implemented correctly, this process can avoid the emission of 2.4 million tons of CO2. But to put that in perspective, this is the same as if everyone in New York stopped driving their cars for the next six months. <laughs> at this point, <laughs> at this point, we did realize that the technology that we were developing, our research, had an impact not just on the engineering field, not just on industry, but it also had an impact on our society. And that is when we decided to launch our startup, Synthetics, together with my co-founder Miriam and Professor Miguel Morestino here at faculty at NYU. With Synthetics right now, we're trying to enter the market offering safety, efficiency, cost, sustainability, and scalability. And to give you an example of how competitive these processes can be if we design them correctly, if we compare ourselves to the leaders in the market, we match their best performance indicators while also being sustainable and safer. For those using a similar route, we have higher efficiency and lower cost. And for all of those other sustainable initiatives that we're trying to enter the market, we have major advantages in terms of cost and scalability. We have now raised over 240K for this venture, and of course our first few grants were from NYU from the 300K Challenge and Innovation Competition, and most recently we also won the first place at the Green Tech Track on University Startup World Cup. And we have used all of this funding to be able to start scaling up our technology. Because since I started everything in the lab, you might imagine that it was research scale. So the initial proof of concept device was the size of my hand, like the one that you see on the right on this slide. And we have now grown 15 times in size. We have the reactor that you see on the left, that's the one that we're working on, and stacking 10 of those will allow us to make one ton of the chemical per year. Afterwards, even if it's easier said than done, we'll grow two reactors about the size of a suitcase to be able to reach capacities of 1,000 tons per year. And from there, we will keep growing. Because these are the type of technologies that we need. This is the type of company that we need to make sure that our chemical industry that has been like this for so long starts becoming a chemical industry that is cleaner, better, and that makes us proud to be working in it. And I just want to leave here today letting you guys know that I honestly believe that NYU is at the perfect spot to be the motor for this transformation. Because at Tandon, we will continue to develop technologies that are useful for challenges and needs that are out there. We will continue to innovate with purpose. 
Afterwards, we have the support of the maker space and the urban and the urban future labs, together with the access to many programs such as NSF, PowerBridge, VentureWell, and many others to scale up the technologies. And finally, we have the support of the NYU Leslie Elab Entrepreneurial Institute and NYU Stern to support the business development of these ideas. Because it is crucial for us to support all three of these aspects so that we can make sure that the ideas and the technologies that we're developing here have a market, have a potential, and to make sure that we have the right path to commercialize them and be successful. We as synthetics are relying on this to grow and to transform this chemical industry because synthetics is our platform to make the chemical industry clean one reaction at a time. And it's only made possible with an amazing team in synthetics, my co-founder Miriam, Professor Miguel Modestino, faculty here at Tandon, Ben and Brian, who worked tirelessly on this project, our entire research group for supporting us with so many things that have come along the way, especially the undergrads that you see listed on the left who all worked with me developing this technology, and of course, all of our sponsors for believing not just in our research, but also in our startup. Thank you so much. Thank you.